the EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. It seems like every local election that matters to Evergreen Park is uncontested, but Dan Casey will be down here at the Nine Foot Homemade Oak Bar to tell you why you need to vote April 4th because the Moraine Valley Board of Trustees race has two spots open and 11 people running for it, and it affects you. I'm also going to let you in on some of the stuff coming up this year in 2023 here on the EP Podcast. And we also have the big meeting that Hannah put together. <laughs> the summit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know she likes the guy when she says she wants me and Erica to come meet him. So we went out and had a couple of beers and met the new dude. And uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah. We, got, we got that coming up. And I actually went to uh, to speak in front of a bunch of kids at Columbia University. Nice. Or Columbia College, I guess is what it's called. It's Their Columbia College. College of Broadcasting that's downtown. And I never went to Columbia. So it was funny for me. It was like a bunch of kids that want to be broadcasters are going to this very fancy school to be broadcasters. And I just come walking in in my blue jeans. I'm like, I'm a podcaster. (laughs) You wish you were me. You wish you were me. That and much more ahead here. It's all brought to you by the First National Bank of Evergreen Park. They invest in the EP community because they love this area as much as you do. And with their total access checking account, you get free ATMs nationwide plus a $300 bonus with qualifying activities. And they also have that junior savers account. That's for the kids. They earn interest on every dollar they deposit. They watch their money grow. And I have that set up with my kids and I can keep track of what they're doing. Like if one of them is like running around spending all their money on lattes, I'm like, whoa, what are you doing I with your money? I wonder which one that is. Right, exactly. <laughs> and when they owe me money, I can just take it out and put it in my account, right? And then yeah. when I, and when I want to give them something, I just throw it in their account. I mean, it's 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 just a great system. It's very user friendly through their website, and and it's great to bank locally to be able to walk into the building and get a question answered. And they're giving great rates for their savings accounts, for their CDs. Stop in and see them. You can learn everything at BankEvergreenPark.com, but stop in and see them in that iconic building right there on the corner of 95th and Pulaski. How are you doing this week? I'm doing good. I'm not. Oh, no. I'm upset. You're and, upset. And oh, I wanted upset? to talk. And I wanted to talk about it on the last show, and I... I didn't know how to approach You're it. You're still upset from the from last time. So what's been bugging you? Well, I'm, I'm upset about um, some news that came out of uh, Most Holy Redeemer Parish. And I, a lot of people have asked me about it. And they've asked me about it because, and, and you know him, Father Paul yeah. Guzman's been on this show a bunch of times. Great guy. And he's also, uh, he's also my co-host on Me and the Priest that we did for several years when I launched this company. And he's somebody that has come over to my house and had dinner with my family. And he's somebody that uh, my kids have gotten to know. The news that came out of Redeemer is shocking at face value. When you when you read what the Archdiocese had them read at Mass last weekend, not this one that just finished, but last weekend, and I needed some time to just kind of not only process how I was going to talk about it on the show, because mm-hmm. I knew I was going to have to. Okay? It's upsetting. Well, not only is it upsetting, but I, I feel like not only do I have to because everybody's asking me about it, because everybody in the neighborhood knows me as the guy that had Father Paul on right. the podcast all the time. Everybody's wondering, like, well, what do you know, Chris? And, and I'll tell you this. I don't know a lot. I know a little more than what's probably in the paper, but I, I don't know a lot. I do know my reaction when I heard about it, and, I, and I'll qualify that. I'll make sure you understand where I'm coming from before I tell you what my reaction was. I came originally from St. Dennis Parish. I grew up at 80th and Spalding. St. Dennis is like 83rd and St. Louis. There isn't even a school there anymore because of what happened there. Because the pastor, Father Hagen, turns out he was doing despicable, horrible things with altar servers. Like, this is something that's been printed in the paper. There were hearings. And it ripped the parish apart. And what he was doing is he was was doing it to altar servers. And I was an altar server at the time that it was happening, unbeknownst to me. Reading the reports later, I realized it was happening to classmates of mine. And I may have escaped just because my dad was a police officer. And it seemed like my other friends were altar servers who had dads that were police officers that somehow they escaped it as well. But I've already kind of heard secondhand directly from at least one person that they were involved in it. And it's it's awful. It's awful to think of. It's awful to 
believe that that was happening while you were a kid and it was happening to kids that you were sitting next to in class. I mean, the guy was using the PA system and having the nuns come over and say, can so-and-so go over and assist Father Hagen over at the church at 10 o'clock in the morning and was pulling kids out of school. That's how bad it was. And there was a one instance where my mom and I had this conversation with Father Paul about this on Me and the Priest, one of the podcasts that I used to do with him for like two, three years before he got his last deployment. And I'm sitting there before church, and here comes Father Hagen walking along. My mother's mad at me because I didn't go to church the week before. And she's like, you won't be able to have communion if you don't have confession. And and she grabs Father Hagen. She goes, Father Hagen, will you give Chris confession real quick before mass starts? Like, he's in his robes and ready to go. And, she, and he's like, oh, okay, fine. And he walks me past all the confessionals in St. Dennis in the church and brings me into a back room behind the altar And then decides he wants to go someplace more private and walks me down a hallway and brings me into a bathroom, shuts the door and says, we got to make this like a confessional and turns out the lights. And then he stands behind me and gives me a back rub throughout the entire confession. Now, it was creepy when it happened. It was creepier when I realized what he was or when I read about it, when I learned about it as an adult. And to think about how close I came to being a victim. So trust me. First, I I was afraid to be around him even after that moment, even after that incident. There was something in me that was like, I don't want to be around this guy ever again. But as I got older and found out what had happened and the truth came out, I avoided priests. I've always been a little weary of them. I got to know Father Paul over the last couple of years and got to the point where I was like, I want to kind of hang with this guy. You know, he's a former U.S. Marshal. He serves in our military, and I talk to him an awful lot about this stuff. And based upon those conversations and the years that I've known him now, when I heard what he was accused of, my initial reaction was, no way, no way. I still, I just don't believe it. That was my reaction, too. I think my jaw hit the ground that someone would accuse him of that. He's not that person. No, he's not. I'm going to tell you that right now. this was before he was even a priest. No, I don't buy it. And, and And I'm sorry, I just don't. Okay, and if and if I if it comes out that I'm wrong, I'll eat my words and you can all yell at me about it. But I'm pretty damn confident about it. I don't buy it. This man has been around my kids now for years. Like I said, I've always been suspicious. I've always watched for signs. Yeah, because that 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 was always my concern because of what was experienced at my age. Right. In my parish that I came from. And I don't buy it. Now, now here's the thing about this. When you read what's going on, it occurred 40 years ago. And I'm going to tell you right now, he wasn't a priest then. No, he wasn't. He was, we've, we've talked about it on the show. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a priest. He wasn't even a U.S. Marshal yet. He was a nurse in a hospital in which he dealt on a regular basis with people that had mental issues. They, I, I don't know if the accuser is one of those, but mm-hmm. he would talk about that openly with us yes, when we would, would sit around and talk to him about his past and why he became a priest mm-hmm. eventually. There's already It's already leaking out that the person who's made the accusation has made him in the past and it's been disproven mm-hmm. and it's been discounted. And from what I understand from the sources I have, the letter that showed up at Most Holy Redeemer that had to be read, that was a point of procedure. That was anytime somebody, somebody gets accused of this, we have to write this letter We have to inform the parish, even if it didn't happen in that parish, even if he's not there because he wasn't there. He's deployed. Right. He's deployed. Even if all that is going on, even if it had nothing to do with it, even if we don't believe it, even if we're looking at this going, probably not, but we have to do our due diligence. They have to release that letter and then they have to see whether or not somebody else comes forward and says me too. And it's just part of the procedure. And so I think that's all I wanted to get out today, just to let you understand that In my time with this person, with the background that I have, with the fears that I had in me after coming from a parish where something terrible happened, and that isn't even the accusation here. Nothing happened at Most Holy Redeemer. They just have a priest who can't come back until they hear this out, do their investigation, and make a decision. That one, I don't buy it. But Father Paul would sit here, former U.S. Marshal, and he would tell you, wait till the end. He'd say, you may think the person's guilty, you could be wrong. You may think the person's innocent, you could be wrong. He'd be the first one to tell you, wait till the end. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait till the end on this. And I'm going to wait and see what's found. 
they find something, trust me, I'll be the first one that comes on. I'll be really upset about it, but I'll be the first one that comes on and tell you about it. If, if they don't find it, he can come back to my bar anytime because I think he'll be back at Most Holy Redeemer eventually. That's my bet. But he would tell you, just wait and see what happens. We're going to push forward with the rest of this show. And I, I appreciate you indulging me on this one because trust me, it was just something I had to, I had to, I had to, you know, I, I had to sit down and talk with the kids too. And I, 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 and they all had the same reaction. And it's just been like one of those things, not the little guy, I didn't even let him know, but like the, the two older ones. And I, I think we're, I think every single person I've talked to that's met the man has felt the exact same way. We'll wait and see though. This is the EP podcast. <laughs> If you've been injured at work, then you need someone who will fight for the care and compensation you deserve. The insurance companies will look out for themselves and their bottom lines, not you. I'm Matthew Coleman, partner and head of the work injury department at the law offices of Parenti and Norm. My team and I have the experience, dedication, and proven results it takes to fight for your rights. Call or text me today at 312-641-5926 or visit us on the web at pninjurylaw.com. It feels like all the local elections coming up on April the 4th don't mean anything because, well, everybody's running uncontested, right? But there's some school board things and library board and Moraine Valley Board of Trustees are having a race. It's a crazy race as well, and and it affects you as well. Evergreen Park falls underneath the area that Moraine Valley Community College serves. Dan Casey is one of 11 running for only two spots. He's got somebody else he's running with by the name of Eileen Curlin Walsh, running for two spots on the Moraine Valley Board of Trustees. And I asked him, why, Dan, would 11 people run against each other for two spots? Yeah, you know, quite candidly, Chris, um, I don't know. And, And I think that's one of the big issues is that, you know, because it is a little bit off the radar, maybe not in the mainstream, people don't understand some of the issues at the college. They don't understand uh, who some of these candidates are. But, you know, when we look at that community college in Payless, what people don't appreciate is that there's over 20,000 students in the college. It covers, I think the districts are somewhere in the context of like 140 square miles. Think about that. 140 square miles feed into the community college. You know, it is just a very important asset for a lot of these kids You know, if you look at the options, for example, what's the average tuition of an in-state school here? Is it 35 grand Um, for those kids that, you know, don't want to go a particular track within those colleges? They don't know what they want to do in life. They want to get the generals knocked out and continue that journey as they make that decision. It's a great platform to do that. And so, you know, to put dollars and cents, you know, if you say the average state school is, is 35 grand a year, you know, Marine Valley, you know, if you're in district, it's what, five to six thousand bucks for the full year. Again, great stepping stone for the kids that are uncertain, uns- a great stepping stone for the kids that don't have that financial flexibility, which given the rising costs, you know, more and more kids can't afford that four year tuition. Uh, and so this really, I think, is people rethink their educational and career choices going forward because of the shifting labor dynamics in the market, rising costs, et cetera. This is just a great platform, and I think it's going to be even more important for a lot of the kids in the community going forward. What do you think is uh, most important things for Moraine Valley that that you, you want to focus on? Uh, the reason why Eileen and I are getting involved in this heavily a competed race. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. There's going to be nine losers. Dan. Yeah. Not, well, I'd like to see, I'd like to say a lot, nine people that come in second place, but <laughs> there's, um, there's, uh, you know, it's, it, and thank goodness I don't have an ego or, you know, I probably never would get involved. But, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that the school has a couple of real big challenges. I think the big challenges we talked about was costs. Um, the other big challenge is, you know, as part of that is they have the collective bargaining agreements that are coming up for negotiation with all the unions of the college. So how do you make sure that, you know, even while you're trying to keep tuitions low, taxes low for taxpayers, um, and then also taxpayers in terms of local taxpayers, as well as at the state level, because the state subsidizes this as well, um, you know, how do we package that up in a way where it works for everybody, right? Where you can make the commitments that you've made to to the workers, you can keep taxes low, and then you can also keep the tu- tuition low for students. And Eileen, and this is the very issue that Eileen and I talked about, which is we really need to come up with novel streams of revenues, right? You need to make the college more sustainable, more self-funding, 
uh, as opposed to, you know, relying on, you know, state subsidies and just, you know, asking um, taxpayers to fit the bill. So we need to take a novel approach to that. Eileen and I have a number of ideas along that camp. Uh, so I think that that will really help on the sustainability side that will also uh, keep costs low and then also take care of the workers in the process. The second issue really is, is that the board, you know, the, the folks that sit on the, the trustees now, they're going to be selecting a new president. And so uh, Dr. Sylvia Jenkins has done an absolutely wonderful job over the years, but they're going to be selecting a new leader of the college. So it really is important to get folks in there uh, as trustees that can help with that selection process. Um, Eileen and I have done all of those things. We've worked at companies. Eileen's an entrepreneur. We know how to manage businesses, start businesses, and make sure that we can manage costs and make it a win-win for all the stakeholders of the organization. Secondly, on the collective bargaining agreement side, you know, when I was briefly on the board in 2018 and 2019, uh, when there was a vacancy, they selected me uh, to join the board. Um, and I ran point uh, alongside the administration in, in managing those CBA agreements. All right. Dan Casey is one of 11 currently running for a spot over at Moraine Valley on their board. Uh, he's got a lot of things that he's uh, he's he's passionate about. Appreciate him coming down here and bringing me a beer. Uh, his <laughs> running mate is Eileen Curlin Walsh, and they will be two of eleven names on a ballot in what April when this uh, when this a- all goes April, down? April fourth. Uh, get out and uh, you know, as in the immortal words of Chicago, vote early, vote often. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, I think it's going to be great. I, you know, listen, all the candidates are doing this for their own reasons. You know, what I can say is that, you know, we are independents. We're going out. We're doing this thing because we care. And uh, we're putting our pocketbooks behind it as well. All right. And he didn't even mudsling. I was I was waiting for that. You know, you know, candidate number eight's kind of got a drinking problem. Like I was waiting for something. <laughs> it's it, well, you know, maybe after a few more Guinnesses, Chris, but not, not yet. It's now time for your EP podcast, Word on the Street, brought to you by Cool Clouds Vapor Shop. Quitting smoking is hard, and Cool Clouds wants to give you an alternative. Full taster bar, great CBD products, new location, northeast corner of 95th and Kedzie, next to the very soon to open Spoken Vine. See all they have to offer at coolcloudsvapor.com or stop in and see them at 3148 West 95th Street here in Evergreen Park. The Village of Evergreen Park is looking for a qualified and motivated individual to be a full-time public works mechanic. The mechanic is going to do mechanical work. I'm only reading what they put out. How about this? You get the full job description and apply. Just go to evergreenpark-ill.com. The Evergreen Park Rec Department is inviting you to the Community Center on Saturday, April 1st from 10 a.m. until 11.30 in the morning to take a photo with the Easter Bunny. Stand next to a bunny that should never get to that size and have a continental breakfast donated by Wolf's Bakery. Another place you can get ready for Easter with the Easter Bunny. Bring the kids to the American Legion, 97th and Kedzie, a pancake breakfast with the Easter Bunny. Sunday, April 2nd, kicks off at 9 a.m. and goes until noon. Get your pictures with the bunny, 12 bucks for adults, 8 bucks for kids between 5 and 12, and kids under 5 are free. Pancakes, sausage, fruit, coffee, tea, juice, all the fixins, and the proceeds support various veteran organizations through the American Legion. You can buy the tickets at the door, or you can go into the American Legion and buy them in advance. And one more thing, a little bit of inside information. I hope they don't get mad at me for telling you all about it, but I have been invited to, I already have the date, but I'm not giving it out. This summer, they're bringing back the whole thing that they did in the park with the food trucks. I think they're bringing it back to Klein Park or Circle Park, whatever you call it. That event was huge last year, a lot bigger than they expected. And I know they're in the planning stages right now. Keep listening to the EP podcast for all the details as they become available. Meanwhile, I want to get to this thing where I finally got to meet Hannah's new boyfriend. Whenever we talk about your dating life, it's brought to you by the hot sauce that you can put on anything. There's so many different flavors. 
locally grown peppers, small batch creations, delivered to your door, Evergreen Park Small Business. I just got an email the other day. Somebody filling out the contact form at the eppodcast.com. They bought a case of Sid Sauce and they want to know about the new guy. Learn about the hot sauces before we get into it at sidsauce.net. So we had the summit. The meat. <laughs> the summit. The, uh, is this a boyfriend? I think so. I screwed it up, didn't I? You heard me say it. I saw the look on your face and his when I said it. I did. You remember I did. I remember it. that. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was messing with you. Erica was mad at me. She's like, you did that on purpose. What was, what was his face? I didn't see it. Oh, his face was the same thing as your face. You both had that look like, are we boyfriend, girlfriend? <laughs> because I was like, we're sitting there. We went out to uh, uh, a brewery and, and normally I hit places that are here in Evergreen Park, but we went to Tinley because Hailstorm Brewing is a sponsor of Socks in the Basement. And I hadn't been there in a couple of weeks. And I like to check in with all the people that advertise with me. Yeah. So I had gone out to Tinley Park to Hailstorm and Hannah had met me out there. He's from Elgin, isn't he? Yeah, he lives in Elgin. Yeah, he's from crazy. the south side. I was like, side. if you're going to drive that far, you might as well just go. You don't need to come all the way to Evergreen. We'll meet you someplace near an expressway. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So so anyway, we sit down. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Okay. He, he's a little nervous. I could tell that. We're a lot to take, especially me. <laughs> the hell you I'm say? I'm a lot to take. Okay. But we sit down. And in my mind, like, I enjoyed the meeting because... I don't care if he likes me or not. <laughs> He's, your <laughs> He's your boyfriend. He's your boyfriend. So I don't care. So when like some political thing came up and he's trying to sidestep it, I just dive right into what I think. I'm like, you know what I think about such and such? And I just lay it out. Right. Yeah. And like, I'm like, I don't care if he likes it or not. And like, I'm, I'm talking about stuff that's going on, like hot button topics. Right. Yeah. Like he's got to duck and move and roll. And like, how do I answer this guy? And am I going to offend anybody? <laughs> and then I just say it. Right. That's why he had so many beers. Oh, I say things. <laughs> and I'm saying things that I know that like one, like half this country would be like, that's terrible. And the other half would be like, yeah. Like, I mean, like, that's what I'm doing. Right. Uh-huh. And I'm doing it for my own personal amusement. And then. And then, and then at some point, I, I think I mentioned, maybe it was your ex, that you're divorced or something oh, like yeah. that. And I said, but your boyfriend here. And I threw the boyfriend when I was telling the story. And right then and there, I saw the look on both of your faces. I know. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I was pushing it along. I mean, look, I only had two hours. We had it someplace right, else we, to go. Yeah, we so had a couple like, hours. Yeah. We got to get through this. Right. Okay? We can't sit here forever. We got to get through this. So how to. How did it how did it go for you? You're keeping him around. I honestly it doesn't matter if I like him or not. It's whether or not you like him, but he must be a big deal. I like if him. after all this dating and these apps and everything else like that and the horror stories, you're now sitting here saying, I want you to meet this dude. Yeah, I want you to meet my best friends. So yeah. it was uh it was it was I think it was good. I felt good. He yeah. really enjoyed talking to y'all. He said y'all were a lot of fun. Yeah. And I heard that. Y'all are both like intelligent people. Y'all can talk about like anything. Well, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't have time to, to have him figure out who I am. Right. No. Like, I just want him to like, like me or not like me. I don't care because I'm not dating him. He's, he's your guy. Right. right. If you would have said, oh, I hate those people. Then we would have known that like, you know, we'll, we'll avoid him for a little while. It's like y'all we'll had a bad feeling sparingly. about the last guy I dated. Right. You know, like y'all were I'm not too uh, sure about this guy. I go right at it. I think that's the role of the friends. Yeah. The role of the friends is to not beat around the bush. Mm-hmm. The role of the friends Just be honest. is to be like, this is how we act. This is where we're eventually going to get. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like this, not, is, this is how we are. Right. This is how we interact. Me and Erica, we're laughing and being silly. Right. And I'm this not is authentically easing, us. I'm not easing you into this. Like on a date, you show up, you're feeling each other out. Second date, you're like, I don't know. Do I tell him about that weird toe? Like, I mean, you don't, <laughs> you don't know what you're going to do. But like with the friends, the friend's job is to just be like, we're this. You've got to be this if you want to hang with us and let him figure that out. Right. Yeah. Because I don't care if he leaves. He ain't my boyfriend. Right. Like, right. I, I, don't, I don't care. So I'm, I'm throwing it all out there. So that I feel like is my role. Mm-hmm. I feel like as the friends, our role is this is what it is. Can you hang with this group? Yeah. And I think he did well. And I think he learned very quickly. Like if you hang out with the uh, with Chris Lanuti especially in a place where like there's booze mm-hmm. and they, they spend money with his company. 
you're going to get some fun stuff. Oh, he was so impressed. <laughs> he was so impressed. The he brewer kept, comes out and he, starts bringing him stuff that hasn't been released yet. Yeah. They were pulling they were pulling bourbon from a barrel. Yeah. But they, 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 they got the barrel delivered and they were like, we have this extra bourbon. I mean, like it was like, I mean, like all the cool stuff. He like talked about that later that night yeah. about that bourbon. Yeah. yeah. He was like, he was like, man, I go with these people and like, I'm getting beers and her and even on the menu yet yeah. that they haven't released yet. That's yet. what he kept saying. He's like, well, can I, can I get a pint of this? And they're like, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he wanted to buy the beer. Like, yeah, we he wanted a four pack this. or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what he wanted. Yeah, they're like, no, 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 buddy, this is the this is the Chris Lanuti special. This yeah. is I know these people. I walk in, I took care of you. That's how this goes. Yeah. So yeah, so of course he loves us. He got he got free beers. He got free beers and <laughs> you know free shot of bourbon, some good bourbon. Building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are the things that Country Financial stands for. They're more than just an office you may pass by as you drive through Evergreen Park. They're neighbors who lend a helping hand and support the fabric of your community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. And since Country is already your neighbor, they want to get together and chat. Call your local Country Financial representative, Mike Thauer, today at 708 425 1559 to talk about the things that are important to you and how he can help you protect them. I went and stood in front of a college course yeah. on podcasting. This is something they teach in colleges now. That's crazy. They teach it in college now. It I was, love it. It was weird to me that I was doing it because I like, look, five years ago when I started this thing, this is this what I'm doing right now. Nobody had thought of. I figured five years later, everybody would be doing it. And I'm sitting in this classroom and the professor, his name is Dan Levy. And Dan's been on everything in Chicago. Like he's a voiceover guy. You hear him on like all these radio stations. He does sports talk radio. He's like a producer of all these, these different shows. He was on the man cow show at one point. He he's worked with all these big names in radio and he found Southside pod, one of the other shows on the network mm-hmm. and then discovered EP podcast and Sacks of the basement and the whole network. And then we started talking through LinkedIn and he's like a professor of podcasting at Columbia. And he's got his students listening to Southside pod. Tell them like, this is what you got to do. Like listening to the EP podcast going like this, this is what you got to do. So we asked me if I'd come in and talk about what I do. And so I sat down and explained to him the whole concept behind the EP podcast, like the idea of like serving your community and doing something that's embedded in it and being part of everything that's going on. And, you know, the the good of that and, you know, the, the struggles with that and like, you know, how we we pay the bills over here in the Lanuti house with yeah. the with these podcasts. And and I'm going through this. And at one point, he just looks at them all and says, we've had like all these other experts come in here and tell you. This is how you do it. You try to be worldwide. You try to go everywhere with your podcast because it can be downloaded everywhere. And none of them made any money. Chris over here runs a company in his house in Evergreen Park and has all these different shows and he's making a living doing it. And they're like, maybe we need to talk to him. And the whole class was like, yeah. And like they held them over for like an extra half hour. And I'm look, I'm not telling the story because I'm trying to make myself sound good. There's like no way I can tell the story without it sounding like I'm bragging, Hannah. Uh-huh. I'm not trying to brag. Be pompous. I'm not trying to brag. Be pompous. But it was cool to me to 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 learn that this is the way that media is going. That at this point they're telling these these younger people who want to get into radio or television or anything, you need to brand yourself and start a podcast first. Because nobody's going to take on a radio station anymore as an intern because everything's paid. Like you have to prove yourself on your own first before you even get into the business. Me, I did the podcasting because I was sick of being in the business. That That is a, it's a complete reverse thing right yeah, now. Yeah, you wanted the freedom. Yeah. But yeah. That, like, that, but this is the thing. Like all the young kids want to do it. And it makes sense. I've talked over at the Evergreen Park High School to the journalism kids over there. And when they ask about podcasting, they're looking at it as, I want to do this. I want to be creative. Can I do this for a living? And it's like this nut that not a lot of people have cracked. So it's become like, like it was interesting to me to sit down and listen that all these other people want to try to do this. Yeah. Right. And then I immediately started thinking to myself, well, how do I franchise this? Like I'm the guy from McDonald's and make a billion dollars. I don't know how. Okay. So if anybody's got any ideas. <laughs> that said, it also got me thinking about the fact that we've been doing the EP podcast for five years this year. We've actually had this thing, this broadcast basement on demand radio network with socks in the basement, Southside pod. I think we're up to nine shows in total that are either produced right here at this nine foot homemade oak bar or supported from it. 
And it hit me in all of this expansion. The original, being around for five years, has gone through a lot. I mean, this was the idea, a community podcast that served an area that was two miles by two miles on the south side of Chicago, a way for people to interact with their community, to hear from local leaders, to learn something about where they live. It's gone through a hotly contested election. It's gone through some major stories over the last five years. Heck, we survived the pandemic together. And talking with those kids got me thinking, it's time for a revival. And that's why I'm announcing here at the end of this episode, coming soon, the EP Podcast Revival. I'm bringing back Eating Evergreen Park. I'm bringing back Meet the Neighbors. I'm bringing back live episodes so you can call in and participate. I'm bringing back the car magnets. I'm making new ones. We're going to give away money. We're going to give away prizes. We're going to give away experiences. We're not going to rest on what we built for the last five years. We're going to revive it and make it bigger and better for Evergreen Park. And I want you to help me. If there's something I missed that you want me to bring back that we used to do, or you have an idea, go to the eppodcast.com, click on that little microphone, leave us a voice message, or hit the contact page and write us a message. We want to hear from you. The EP Podcast 2023 five-year revival will be anywhere a podcast can be found and always at the eppodcast.com. It's the EP Podcast, all things Evergreen Park. It's the EP Podcast. Evergreen Park.